Hi everyone, this is Rich from trekwithus.com and today I'm going to be changing the oil in our, uh, our RV and uh, this is a E450 chassis, which is a Ford van chassis, really and uh, the engine is 6.8 liter V10 so if you're just curious how to change oil, I mean it's all kind of the same car to car but in this case I'm going to give you the specific uh, pieces, parts, quantities that you need to do the uh, Ford 6.8 liter V10 that's found in an awful lot of RVs, uh, really most RVs, that uh, are either C or B class RVs use, use this engine just because it's very reliable and uh, nothing more than that really. Um, it's got enough power to pull an RV too of course. So first question, why change your own oil? And uh, I'm going to tell you that really uh, depending on where you are it's hard to find a place that'll change oil in an RV just because you got to have a big enough bay for the whole vehicle to get in there. And then the second reason of course is cost. Uh, I can change the oil and I'm going to use synthetic oil in this case. This is uh, Mobile One. It's you know generally considered one of the best synthetics you know short of like a royal purple uh, but good oil and this is going to cost me around 25 bucks to change the oil. You bring this to a dealer I can't imagine uh, for synthetic oil they're going to charge you less than 100 bucks, and even a conventional oil change for an RV is going to be 50, 60 bucks, um, just based on prices I've seen. So we're going to get started. Um, first thing, you don't want to be wearing a nice shirt. <laughs> Not that this is a really nice shirt, but put on some grubbies because uh, you might get dirty. So. That's better. Now, this is an old shirt. I don't really care if I get a little oil on it. Not that I'm going to try to. So then the second thing is you got to make sure you've got the, the right parts. Sorry about the noise. I'm actually at my mom's house up in New England. We just stopped in for a visit. And as a lot of campgrounds aren't going to let you do things like change, change your oil there, uh, I figured I might as well take the opportunity to do it here because uh, nobody's going to police me here. Now, the 6.8 liter in... Uh, at least in the E450, you know, C, B class, you're going to want to use this filter right here. And this is available at Walmart for about maybe $3.25, I think I paid. And it is the uh, part number FL-820S. So you can see that right there. Get your part number. And this is a uh, Motorcraft filter. You see it says Ford right on it. <clears throat> so this is the oil filter we need. Then of course you need one of these, it's just an oil pan. This is a cheapie. These things cost like two bucks. And the most important thing is that it's going to hold all the oil that you're going to drain out of this. The uh, total oil in here is six quarts. This is a seven quart oil pan. So it'll hold all six quarts and just a little bit of room to spare. And then notice it's got a little pour spout so that we can pour this back into the containers and uh, bring the oil back, get it recycled, and always recycle your oil. Really important. The only other thing we're going to need, uh, I've got some shop towels. When I change the oil, I put down a tarp underneath me so that if any of it leaks, it's not going to get into the pavement. And of course, you're going to need six quarts of oil. Now this is five quarts, so you're going to have to get five plus one. So you can get you know, one of these big containers and then a small container and you're good. I'm going to change the oil on my car too, and therefore I got two big ones because between the two of them they take ten quarts, four in my little uh, tow, tow vehicle and six in the RV. Now you'll notice that this is uh, 5W20, okay, and uh, I'm not going to get really into the oil weights, but what I will say is 5W20 is kind of thin oil, and most... Uh, newer manufacturers, or a lot of newer manufacturers, Honda and Ford in particular recommend 5W20 and they're doing it largely because it helps you get slightly better fuel economy. Thinner oil is a little bit less resistance in the engine and uh, therefore supposedly gives you you know maybe a tenth a tenth of a mile per gallon better. I've heard the argument that your engine's gonna get worn more using this oil and therefore even though it slightly saves you uh, or gives you better fuel economy when the car is new, uh, you're going to have worse economy, you know, maybe after 100,000 miles because parts are going to get worn. That may be true. Um, 
I'd rather just do what the manufacturer recommends. You know, Ford and Honda recommend 5W20, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I don't know enough about oil to really say, hey, I'm going to put 10W30 in there instead, but I think if you ran 1030, you're going to be just fine too. So if that's what makes you comfortable, do that. This is what Ford recommends. This is what I'm going to do. The uh, Motorcraft oil that Ford recommends is only a little bit cheaper than this, you know, maybe 50 cents a quart or so, maybe a buck. Um, and it is a semi-synthetic, so it's like part synthetic, part dyno oil, uh, but this is fully synthetic. So the first thing to do to get started changing your oil, uh, first thing I do, run the engine, run it for about five minutes. You're just trying to get the oil warm because then it'll drain a lot faster and more easily. So I've run the engine for about five minutes. Just keep in mind that the oil can be hot, so it's not a bad idea to wear gloves. I'm not going to bother. But, uh, you know, hot oil will burn you, especially if you run the engine for a while or if you do an oil change after you've been driving where the engine's going to get really hot. I only ran it for a few minutes, uh, just enough to get the oil kind of warmed up so it'll, it'll drain quickly. Uh, second thing I always do, I'm going to pop the hood and take the oil cap off. And the reason I do that is because when you, when you open the drain, it's sort of like when you're trying to pour from a bottle where uh, the, 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 the oil will kind of glop. Glop, glop as air is trying to rush back in to fill the tank. Okay, so in the engine, you can see it's over here to the left, and it even says right on it, 5W20 Motorcraft recommended. And we're just gonna pop this guy off, right? Because this seals up pretty tight, and that way, uh, as the oil drains, air will come in right through the top here. And so now I'm going to get down underneath and uh, I'll show you where the filter, I'll show you where the uh, drain valve is. This is the front bumper and as we go back you can see this is your sway bar, this is a steering stabilizer and all the, the steering linkage and it's quite a bit back behind that. Ugh. Kind of flat on my back here. Okay, that's the oil uh, oil filter right there. So I'm probably, you see the wheels? I'm just slightly behind the wheels to get to the oil filter. And then the oil pan is right next to it, right here. And that's the drain, drain plug right there. Okay, so we want to open that up first. And the important thing when you do open the plug, of course you want to have your pan positioned underneath it. And you want to make sure that your pan is positioned well so you don't have oil going everywhere. But you'll notice I'm also, this is a tarp I'm on top of. So if it does leak, I've got a tarp. I've got some shop towels to clean up the oil. Because sometimes it's messy when you start to uh, to pull the, pull the plug. So let me get my uh, ratchet out and then I'll, I'll actually film film that part so you can watch it drain. It says right on it, it's a uh, 5 8 ratchet side. Alright, so here we go. No, I got it loose enough I can do it by hand now. When it goes, I'm just going to drop the plug. Oh. You notice how it's not uh, it's not going glip 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 glip, which sometimes happens when people do their own oil, and that's just a function of having the uh, fill valve open, so it just pours nice and cleanly. And they have valves that allow that to come out pretty cleanly like this, but uh, I say why use a valve if you can just do it this way. All right, so it takes a little bit to let it all drain out. And I'm just going to let it drain, and then I'll come back and show you the filter. Okay, so most of the oil is drained. You look at it, it uh, gets to a point where it's just kind of dripping like this. And you can kind of let it drip as long as you feel like. So it's up to you if you want to walk away and let it drip for an hour or so. See, it's just dripping now. you got to retrieve your drain plug. 
and uh, here it is. And some drain plugs are magnetic. They'll have a magnet here, and uh, that point of the magnet is just to collect particles, any metal particles that come from the engine. Either this one isn't magnetic, or just no no parts in there, but. Uh, pretty clean, but you want to wipe it down and most importantly just make sure that uh, there's no metal pieces or anything along the, uh, the edge of this because this wants to seal nice and tight so that you're not leaking oil. Okay, so you don't want any uh, pieces or parts or, or metal shavings or anything around the, uh, the edge. So at this point I'm going to just close it back up. And unless if you wait um, pretty much indefinitely, <laughs> it'll just keep dripping. So at this point, you know, there's very little of the old oil left in there. And we're just going to get this guy back in here and tighten it up. Okay. And get it most of the way in just by hand. I'm going to clean it. Yeah. And really important is don't over tighten it. So when you get your ratchet back, and we go to tighten it back in there. You want to not go too tight. Okay? Yeah. So if you strip the threads on this, you'll, you'll leak oil forever. And uh, if you either strip the threads on the plug itself, then you got to replace the plug to prevent that, or if you strip the threads on the oil pan, you got to replace the whole pan. And you don't want to have to do either of those things. So I got it in there nice and snug. And now we're going to move on to the oil filter. Okay, so we got to take the oil filter off. And we're going to replace it with our nice new oil filter. And I'm just going to do this by hand. They do have uh, oil filter wrenches you can use. And I know of people that uh, even like hammer a screwdriver through the side of it so they have something to torque. Pretty sure I can just grab this one by hand and, and unscrew it, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> and I would love to, to film that, but I, I don't have a little mini tripod, so just know that uh, we're gonna twist it this way, and that you wanna make sure you have your uh, oil pan under it when you take the oil filter off, because there will be some oil that drips out of here uh, when I twist this thing off. Okay, so get your oil pan ready. And uh, once I get this off, then I'll show you putting the new filter on. I got the filter off, and I gotta tell you, a lot more oil came out of this than I was expecting. As I was unscrewing the uh, oil filter, oil was running down the sides, and it's a good thing I had my, uh, my oil pan directly underneath because uh, it was a little bit messy. Okay, so this is the new filter. And what you wanna do, you see it's got this little rubber ring. You want to uh, just put a little bit of oil on your finger and just run it around that ring to lubricate it before you tighten it in place. On and again, it's not really something I can do uh, while filming, but uh, once you get that on there, you're just going to give it, get it nice and tight. I think hand tight is fine. Uh, if you feel like using a wrench and really wrenching it up there, then then go for it. But uh, my hand tight is probably a little bit, you know, a little stronger than a lot of people's. I'm young, I got pretty strong hands, so I'll, like I say, I'll get this uh, lubed and then screwed right up on there, and then I'll be able to take the old oil out of here and move the oil pan out of my way. There's the new oil filter in place, and it's on there about as tight as I can get it by hand. Um, note that you know if you're getting oil on your hands, your hands are slippery. You're not going to be able to tighten it as much. So another good reason to have shop towels, or you know, if you don't feel comfortable with it and you want to make sure to use a you want to make sure to use a uh, oil filter wrench. It's kind of just this circular looking thing with a handle and when you twist the handle down it grips it and turns. And then they also have ones that'll go over the end and uh, you can use a ratchet to tighten or a screwdriver. But this has got little grooves on it so it's pretty easy to grab it and give it a good twist and that's on there pretty darn tight. I've got my uh, plug back on tight and now we're going to go fill this thing up with oil. So myself out from under here and uh, I'll do that and then we'll be done. And when filling, um, a lot of these bigger containers, some of the small ones too, but they have these little foil tops and I find it helpful, you can just kind of make a hole in the, in the front of it. 
makes it a little easier to pour and then just put a little a little hole in the back so that it can drain gives the air a place to come back in sort of like that and then I always use a funnel uh, so we don't make a complete mess because it's tricky to get it right in the hole and this isn't a very good funnel but any funnel is better than no funnel and just don't pour too fast and you're good And that's it, I'm done. Uh, I've got it all closed back up. And I'm gonna use the empty five quart containers to uh, put the old oil. So make sure to get the oil recycled. The last thing would be uh, the oil filter itself. They recommend letting them drain for about 12 hours. Um, in some states you're required to recycle the oil filter. In some, after you let it drain, you can just toss them. Uh, I'll leave that one up to you. I prefer to recycle everything if I can. And then the last thing to remember is up until I start the engine, I've got all the oil in the pan and there isn't any oil uh, in the oil filter. So if you go and you test the oil, it might look a little bit high to start, but you got to run the engine first so that the oil gets down into the, uh, the oil filter. The oil filter holds quite a bit of oil, probably half a quart, uh, maybe not quite that much, but plenty of oil plus um, the way this engine is set up, the oil filter is kind of remote, so uh, we've drained all the oil out of all the pipes and everything else, and uh, when I start the engine up again, it's going to pull some of the oil out of the pan into the system, and then I'll be able to get a more accurate reading uh, as far as oil level. So that's it. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, have any questions, let me know in the comments, and uh, until next time, uh, happy trekking.